Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to CE 488 uh, lecture 15. I will be continuing with the previous uh, topic biogeo interactions and its importance in civil engineering. See, last class we talked about what was the genesis of uh, soil mechanics uh, right from Carl Terzeghi's era and where we have reached today. If you see the development of uh, soil mechanics, first it was the three phase system where you considered only the physical features of the soil and you tried to model the behavior of the soil. Then came your chemistry aspect which you superimposed on your soil behavior and tried to understand its response under various conditions. So, in this aspect, we also looked into the uh, point where how the soil is basically generated from uh, rock, what are the weathering processes that are happening and once weathering takes place, what is the, what are the possible environments in which it is exposed to and what could happen to its uh, in situ condition. In this aspect, we, we have seen what are the flaws that exist in our current modeling of soil behavior. We consider all idealistic conditions wherein you do not consider the biological aspects of its formation, you do not consider the unsaturated phase that is getting generated because of the environmental conditions, you do not consider its dynamic behavior over a period of time and you assume a certain response based on your idealized testing conditions or your idealized understanding of its behavior and you try to pr predict its behavior down the line for a period of 10, 15, 20, 50 years. So, this is basically a flawed approach which we have followed till now and we need to rectify it. So, in this aspect, do you have any questions related to the previous lecture? Those who are present or those who are absent based on whatever I have said in the past one minute. So, moving on to the lecture, let me talk about where do we apply these concepts of biological interactions in soil mechanics. See, basically a term called biomineralization comes into picture when you talk of the biological interactions in soil mechanics or for that matter any biological activity uh, you consider bio biomineralization is one of the key aspects where you consider the biological activity influencing most of your behavior. So, biomineralization is nothing but the minerals formed either because of the biological activity or by its influence. I mean where biological activity is involved in the process of formation of minerals is called biomineralization. So, this can happen uh, basically in three different ways or it can be classified in three different ways based on its origin uh, which is called biologically controlled, biologically induced or biologically influenced. So, why do we consider its origin and why do we classify them based on this? When you consider any material, it has to be first, we have to first understand its origin and then we need to proceed from there. That was, that is the same with soils as well. So, when you consider biomineralization and its three categories of origins, you basically see biomineralization by uh, biologically controlled mechanisms is nothing but where the microorganisms influence or they control. Let us come back to the previous slide. See, after e evolution, what is the next revolution which is which has occurred or which is going to occur? Two words appear always in pairs. A hint. Nano also, nano is a part of. It again comprises of two parts. No, my question is different. My question is chemistry, and then I asked you a question how many of you like biology or life sciences, biosciences, and so on. There must be a reason of asking this question. And then my next statement was that after e evolution. Genetic engineering, correct. So, basically, we are poised to see the revolution in 
life sciences clear everything ultimately is merging to life sciences whether you talk about nano is nothing but a part of life sciences why it is so why should we study all these things biodentalization biological control processes biological induced processes biological influence processes and so on as a solution in what is the need to improve human life to improve human life induction effect to yeah. understand the failure to understand failure of what nature or human mind human mind very good how do you prove this statement why is a solution i require bio sciences why should i resort to bio sciences the effect of uh, microorganisms and soil like uh, this we have very structure of this so then how the microorganisms could affect that is that the only concern foundations and other things will come later see i am sure you must have realized ultimately what we are doing is we are trying to understand material which is nothing but soil or rock with a different perception clear is this correct or not we are considering this whole material as a living entity soil we are considering as a living entity otherwise what we thought about soil is the earthy material so why am i asking this question that ultimately when geotechnical engineering or civil engineering is also heading towards life sciences so if somebody asks a question what is the future of civil engineering and civil engineers do you get an answer what See the beauty is life emerges out of the soil and ultimately bends into the. I hope you understand this statement. Clear. So the time has come where people have realized that they were doing gross injustice to the material by not considering it as a living entity. In previous lecture, we were talking about all the processes as a function of time. So we were talking about all these activities as a function of time. That means this becomes a dynamic system. From where this dynamism comes? Because of the biological phenomena which are prevailing in the system, and that's the reason this material is different than steel, which is man-made. Have you ever come across, you know, man-made rocks? you cannot induce life in a dead system you agree i am talking about philosophy exactly unless the system is life itself so this is a big perception which has happened in last few years you know civil engineers geotechnical engineers uh, you know environmental scientists mineralogists Our science people, they have all started taking or considering geomaterials as a material full of life. Now, once you consider this thing, everything becomes a dynamic process. Liquid limit as a function of time. You got the point? Shrinkage limit as a function of time. Strength as a function of time. Compressibility as a function of time. Pore structure as a function of time. Clear? Yeah. So the whole perception changes because, except for the human being and the living organisms, nothing was a function of time only. So whole engineering was almost a dead stop. So now you will find go through the web pages of most of the professors in Western world. If they have to survive in academics, R and D, research, consulting, they are all heading towards life sciences. So in my opinion, two subjects have become very very important for civil engineers. One is chemistry, which all of us hated. <laughs> I also never liked chemistry. But ultimately, I ended up doing lot of chemistry. I had to learn from my own students. 
and second thing bio which i was scared of most of us are scared of but now the time has come we have to learn this clear so this is the future of civil engineering and geotechnical engineering to master the classical concepts and they are taught to you in third year soil mechanics and top them up with the concepts of biology that will make a very interesting thing now moving on to the the origin and why do we need to consider these types of origin you have the biologically controlled mineralization process wherein the organism tries to control or dictates where this particular mineral is to be generated where it is to be deposited what what should be the size of the mineral deposited what should be its activity and so on so the next thing would be the biologically induced mineralization this is a process where the microorganism just induces some sort of chemical environment in and around its surroundings which controls or which influences the formation of such minerals the other type of mineralization formed would be the biologically influenced this is where the influence of biological activity would be there not the directly the organisms but some of its products influences the pre precipitation of some minerals so now what is the difference between biologically influenced or biologically induced and controlled biologically controlled stands out uh, very distinctly because these are the minerals which are formed and precipitated inside the organisms themselves Sorry. so these are the types of organisms which form i mean these are the types of minerals which form inside the organisms and which do not come out in the geo environment or in the environment in which the organisms are present so this is where we need to see how relevant this is to us so then the next thing would be how biologically induced and influenced are important to us so this is where biologically induced or influenced plays a role in our day to day activities when we consider uh, induced or influenced activities say for example you have some material with you and you have some bioactivity loaded on it or say for example nature has loaded some bioactivity on it so whether the organism is influencing i mean organism is directly involved in its in the mineral growth or whether it is influencing or its products are influencing some mineral growth for example if i want to communicate with you i can directly communicate with you face to face or i can make a telephone call or an internet call so this could be one of the differences between the induced and the influenced uh, type of uh, precipitations we'll come back to this side i'm sure most of them might not have followed the real life situations there one two three will occur why it should be studied okay real life very very basic situations can you discuss one two and three see a mineral activity is basically dependent on its shape its size its chemical composition where it is located everything now for example there is some chemical that is getting precipitated in in any material so is it going to influence us or not is the main question so when you talk of I do not know whether most of them are aware of this or not see in kondu villages when they construct their houses you know i consider villages are the best possible researches very advanced methods what do they do they add a lot of jetty they add a lot of bio materials cow dung clear to make mortar i hope you understand what is mortar you understand what is mortar second year students why do that so this concept is there since ages fine that means people must be aware of activity of biological systems in creating a good bond which can be used for strength or durability or whatever 
The same thing we are doing today for also. So we say we are doing it for the first time to this is not. Maybe this was done 3000 years back. This is a simple example. Uh, most of the bioactivity was mixed with construction materials for creating anything which you wanted. This is the genesis of the subject. Now, mineralization. What is mineralization? He has written cellular activity controls growth. It could be reverse also. Is this correct? Uh, in the sense? Uh, rather than growth, it could be a decrease phenomena also. Yeah, the, I mean growth or uh, reduction in the growth. There could yes. be a situation where cellular activity exists and by adding something to it, cellular activity may decrease. I hope you realize this point. Most of the force which were done in the country were based on this idea. Over a period of time, they gain strength. Whether you cure them or not, in Rajasthan, most of the time, in the most of the infrastructure which you see, there is no water. How would they cure it? There used to be no rains. How would they cure masonry, water, and so on? The good example where they have used mineralization process to create the best possible bond between the subsequent materials. I do not know whether you have come across this concept or not. There is something known as aging of sand or interlocking of sand. That means sands over a period of time give you a monolith structure. So most of the time when you draw shear strength curve, you know, in your fourth year, third year soil mechanics you must study, the graph passes through zero zero line. Tau versus percentage strain it is fine, but tau versus sigma if you plot, then what happens? You always draw this one zero zero, more, more to the middle. So this thing is not correct. Because there will be some induced variation because of the mineralization. So the more and more system matures over a period of time geologically, it gets induced cohesion in it, which is known as apparent cohesion. Aging of sand, swipe it on net and get the information and try to see in what way it helps civil engineering profession. Fine. Science was always supposed to be passive material. But when they come in contact with some microorganisms, clear? It's a sort of a fusion of the particles which take place. And these particles amalgamate with each other and they give more strength. Now, this is a concept which is normally used for doing a lot of, you know, construction in sandy deposits. A very good example was castles of Afghanistan, which have been destroyed now. Have you heard about this? No? We lost all these things, you know, 3-4 years back during the bombarding. Read the history of castles of Afghanistan which were created out of sands. So, the, the biggest question is how would you bind the particles of sands? Because you have studied in your soil mechanics course C is equal to 0, 5 equal to 35, 40 degree. Okay, is this correct? But truly is these are some sands. Sands may behave in a different manner also. Provided they have undergone a thorough cycle of biological activity or chemical activity. So when he talks about mineralization, a different mineral composition exists in the system which exhibits a totally different response of sands. Is this correct? As a wonder, you go to the deserts. What is the plant normally you find in deserts? Sorry? Cactus. How it survives there? Are even after seamless transformation, how many years will they survive there? Roots are, you are totally wrong. Find out the root zone of the cactus. 
it is absolutely as minimum as possible. So, this is a very, if you really want to learn geotechnical engineering in deserts, please go through all these articles. I will not give you answers. My job is to make you more good curious. Cactus survives there. Okay, I understand less trans, trans, evapotranspiration, the structure like this, but then, then 51, 55 degree temperature throughout their life they are facing. How they are surviving there? Fine. So you take out this time whenever you get a chance to go to a desert, take out some plants and look at their roots. A lot of answers will come out of that. Otherwise, see the videos on uh, discovery and what is that another national level. National level. How plants survive in deserts. Right? Now this has become a very interesting subject for us as a geotechnical engineer. We want to learn what nature does. And this is why this guy is mother. He, he is doing his PhD in this subject now. So the term which is normally used is biosuction. What you are saying is correct. A tendency to draw water to water from a depth of even 50 meters is commendable. Cactus is a plant which can create so much suction to lift water from a 50 meter depth. Clear? Have you ever come across a pump designed by human beings which can lift water from a 50 meter depth? Simple pump which normally used in your household activities. You cannot. Have you come across any pump where you can lift water from 50 meter depth? So this is man versus nature. You got the point. Human being has failed to design a form which can lift water from a depth of 50 meters. But these guys, plants, they can lift suction. There must be something which is happening, you know, at the root zone phase, interface. So there are roots, there is soil in which they are embedded. Look at the interface. Now we call them as a contact problem in geotechnical engineering. Contact between soil, microbial activity and the roots. What type of dynamics is existing over there? Okay, that controls the entire process. And everything is controlled by level transpiration. So this is another example how you know in deserts life exists. Nature is wonderful. It has created life in desert also. Also, the preservation of uh, age-old uh, heritage structures. Suppose you they are exposed to uh, corrosive environments and you want to rehabilitate them. You you cannot obviously bring some uh, material from uh, outside and try to restore it, uh, replace the existing structures. You obviously have to restore whatever is there within its uh, constraints or within the uh, smallest uh, limited modifications that you are allowed to do. And this is where you can take help of biological activity which can produce certain minerals which can uh, remove this corrosive and uh, remove the corrosive uh, coating that is got stuck onto the uh, structure or which can prevent other corrosive activities getting onto the structure or in some cases wherein the heritage structures have been developed or have been created in such a way that with the help of bioactivity even after 2000-3000 years they are not getting corroded because of the corrosive environment even if they are exposed to. So people are more interested nowadays to understand how these structures have been built in such a way that they do not get into the effect of this uh, environmental change or the climate change that people normally talk about today. First time when he asked a question, he was talking about iron and something, clear? Now second time he has withdrawn iron, but I think I am sure we can give both the answers to him. See, the, but organisms do not generate something out of the blue. It has to be within the na uh, laws of the nature. It has to follow transformation of materials from one form to the other. So basically what is happening is because of its activity or because of some metabolic process that is happening inside just like how it happens inside your stomach. 
you take rice or chapati in its whatever form it is and when it is digested it gets converted into carbohydrates sugars fructose starch gets separated everything so similarly even in the case of these type of processes say you have some different inorganic chemicals present for example you have calcium in one form and because of some activity of the organism there are some two three processes combining together and ultimately you get an end product calcium carbonate say you have different monomers present in the environment say you have sucrose you have fructose all these sugars present basically and because of the activity of biologic i mean uh, microorganisms you have some organic polymers getting generated so now what do these organic polymers do or what do these uh, type of minerals do i will come to that in a uh, the short while but these are certain processes like say they feed on normal uh, like if you have, uh, if you look at the uh, lecture uh, slides of my uh, previous lecture i talked about the uh, organisms which take the uh, which feed on the inorganic particles of sand or rock now these elements from this whatever it is taking it is combining in its uh, organic or bio environment into a different form these elements it is taking and combining it with other uh, different elements and forming a new materials Very good. Soft shell capacity. 
These are nothing but bentonites, monomonite minerals. Clear? So their charge holding capacity is very high. What is slate? Chemical composition of slate. What is chemical composition of slate? Salts. Clear? On the skin, you have and millions, trillions of bacteria. So what do you do? When you put a layer of this thing, this pack, and when you clean it, what happens? Everything gets adhered to the minerals, clay minerals, which are the best possible solvent of any chemical, bacterial, microbiological activity. The skin becomes fresh. So these are the exchange processes which are going on, either mineralization, demineralization, hundreds of examples are there. Did you get this point? C2O3 will get formed because of something else. Iron Fe plus 3 to Fe plus 2. Clear? Or Fe plus 2 to Fe plus 3. Okay, so, so like we have. Listen, listen, listen. Yeah, oxidization will occur. Only see, oxides will be formed once you oxide, once you oxidize them. When you heat them, combust them, then only oxides will form. Otherwise, they remain elemental form. Please don't mix up these two things. So to create an oxide of something, I have to incinerate it. Is this correct, Shishank? Yeah, and one more thing is that uh, the electron transfer mechanism, the, that also plays a role. So these are the mediators, all sorts of bioactivity. Because they themselves, by virtue of their size, are negatively charged. So this is a very interesting mechanism now. Going on between clay predators which are negatively charged, microbial activity which is negatively charged, water molecules which is a dipole. Clear? Now this whole system becomes active. Dipole is confused what it should do, whether it should go towards the clay platelet or it should go towards the bacteria and get adhered on the top of the bacterial cell. So this is how now the system evolves. I just want to add about the uh, in soil how the enzymes and other portions which are added onto the surface due to the bioactivity. Uh, so by bioactivity I mean not only the microbes, maybe the ants, the worms, the plants, uh, root exudates which are coming onto the soil uh, sphere. So these excrete some enzymes into the soil. And uh, this can affect the pore structure of the soil as well. Uh, so uh, we have to consider all these aspects while uh, studying more about the pore structural changes that are happening to the soil. Uh, not only the enzymes, uh, but other uh, gas productions are also being happening in the soil. And these can also affect uh, many properties which we are uh, relating to the soil. Uh, so these, these are sort of answers. A lot of papers are available on anthill soil analysis. Please read those papers. Go to the Google, those of you are interested and uh, theoretical engineers got motivated and they wanted to understand, you know, what type of structures anthills are and how they have been created. Okay. Yeah. And, and they have taken all the soil samples from the anthill and they have analyzed it. There are several papers which are available. Complete Ajanta Alora paintings have been done with organic colors by using the organic adhesives. Clear? On which a lot of research is being done right now. And these are the colors which have not faded for how many years? Any idea? These are all bio systems. Also, uh when Agnes was talking about uh, degradation of uh, waste, there also you find uh, most of the uh, organic, I mean, uh, most of the uh, municipal solid waste getting degraded and for convert, getting converted into different forms. Here again, uh, what uh, Sir was talking about, about the redox potentials, these come into picture and also the electron transfer mechanisms is what is happening inside. That is what uh, governs most of the processes that is happening even inside the landfill. Yeah, the municipal solid waste uh, has organic fraction which would be like cellulose, hemicellulose, lignin, 
All those things are appearing in the process of degradation is then acted upon by microbes and then converted into acetic acids and alcohols. Finally, again acted upon by uh, bacteria would be in, under anaerobic conditions would lead to the liberation of methane and carbon dioxide. So, if, even when you talk about uh, the degradation of the solid waste, it is not just, uh, it is a complete microbial species which are like acidogenesis bacteria, methanogenesis bacteria, all those things which has its own role to play in transforming one to the other. And the survival of the microbes are also based on the ambient temperature and moisture conditions which like there are bacteria which can uh, survive at very low temperatures, very high temperatures and if such conditions prevail, only then their activity can be enhanced or they lead to the uh, formation of certain products. So this is in, in context to what happens in uh, degradation of organic material. Yeah, so basically, the, uh, when you talk about degradation, it is actually biological, chemical and physical phenomena, which together plays a role. Now, uh, the importance of bioactivity comes because that is what is responsible for, when you talk about bioactivity, the thing is, it is, it is not any harmful uh, process. Any chemical pro process would result in something which would be hampering a geo environment, but bio is always considered to be, it, 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 it's a part of the natural cycle, it has its, you know, the benefit of being a healthy process and uh, because it is part of the natural cycle. So, and then to enhance or to improve the degradation, uh, we always promote situations or conditions where the microbes can thrive and then lead to their activity, a proper bioactivity. So that comes a picture of the degradation of MSW part. So that comes it. Uh, people talk about geo microbiosphere nowadays. Check it out on Google. Google. Geo microbiosphere. Call your classical geo mechanics was based on what? Homogeneous isotropic semi infinite shell mass. Do you remember? Now they, they talk about the biosphere because soil is the entity which is a part of the biosphere. Geo microbiosphere. Geo material. Clear? Microbio. It's also got attached to the geo materials. Are into the system. Synergy. Natural process. So, this is what actually people are trying to understand in today's world. There's a lot of research being done. Look at the websites of several people. In India, it's unfortunately not very much. But those of you who want to go by studies along with a very beautiful area, to work in this. A uh, similar process is taking place in soils in deep seas, where the organic matter which was buried with the uh, water brought down by the rivers is decomposed by bacteria into carbon dioxide and methane which leads to the formation of uh, gas hydrates under appropriate conditions of temperature and pressure. Then industrial waste also can, industrial byproducts can also be used to remediate this uh, uh, high, uh, high alkalinity present in these industrial byproducts or uh, they can be used to extract some of the important metals from this uh, industrial byproducts. For example, one of you had cited in the first or second lecture is bioconcrete. Somebody had already worked in this. You remember somebody was sitting somewhere here or in this row who had already worked in this area of bioconcrete. So, bioactivity in concrete is a good example of all these type of mineralization, biologically induced mineralization. Concrete which becomes corroded or rusted or deteriorated can be made more durable if I induce microbial activity into it. Wait, I think you are working, you are talking about this, you are, you are working with Prakash? You, you are aware of it. So this is another interesting area where people are trying to work in, you know. Um, they talk about bioconcrete. Bio soils have not yet come to the picture, but truly living soils contain a lot of bioactivity in them automatically. So what you have to do, you have just play with it so that it gets enhanced the way you wanted it. So you have to create soils where a lot of 
microbial activity halves for the betterment. Then I need not to inject any chemical into it. I think the once once the geotechnical engineer goes into practice, it's not the conventional thing that is already uh, that is what is required. So there are already a lot of companies which are doing conventional geomechanics and everyone is well trained. No one requires further expertise in that. So once once we look into a problem in the field, there are no such things which are existing which you just need to put the glass which are already given and design something and build the structure and continue with it. Lot of things have changed and are changing day by day. So everywhere you have to use your intellect or something new will be coming out every day. Nothing is like uh, this is enough for solving the project. The last class itself, uh, the example of clean and I don't know if you are clear or not. The corrosion of the pipes and all was a practical example. The corrosion of the pipes, underground pipes was a great example, I guess, in the last class when he gave. So nobody dwells into something just for the profit. See, one of the answers would be learning from your failures. You agree? That's it. <laughs> the best possible track shear test people have done. The best possible shear test that people have done. The best possible C5 parameter they bought. They executed the best possible way. But even then, structure failed. Why? What is the answer? Biological, uh, it was a biological factor. Yeah. That means something which you have not included in this philosophy is playing the whole game. Or is camouflaging the entire thing. Even if you take the biological factor into consideration, but how do you calculate it? Well, that's a good question. That means you have accepted that it is required. Yes, then the next question is how to do this. Fine. So we are still, you know, traveling in this frame of mind, or we are in the frame of mind that we have just accepted the facts. Now the question is how to do it. That's the longest process. That takes time. For that, you have to understand things. That if means the failures which are occurring make you realize that you have mastered things, but still they are not very correct. Otherwise, the structure should have been standing there for hundreds of years. Why your railway embankments are failing? Why dams are failing? Why fighting action is occurring? Clear? There is no ready made answer or solution for all the problems that you face in civil engineering problems. Say, say for example, as everyone has related, that you are constructing uh, a particular structure with all the things or whatever you can crack inside a particular thing. Say for example, you are going to construct a foundation. What you normally do, you go out there, collect the samples, and you understand what material it is, whether it is sandy, whether it is clay, what are the strength parameters and everything. But still there are some uncertainties which make you to put some factors into your ranging from 2.5 to 3. Or depending upon the importance of the structure and all those parameters. Now, how can we, you know, when you are applying factor safety, it is also known as the factor of ignorance. The more you add the factor safety, the more is the product, I mean, the cost which you invest in your foundation. Now, that, how can you reduce it? Why don't you give a factor safety award? You know, in structural engineering cases and above buildings, for superstructures, we normally use in the range of 1.15, 1.5 in that range. Why not in foundation? Foundation it starts on 2.5. I mean, that, that means that there are a lot of uncertainties. How can we address these uncertainties? How can you bring, break down the capacity to from 2.5 to 2 to 1.5? And the, the moment you bring 2.5 to 1.5, you are saving in crores. <coughs> Just think about such, such a situation. A developing country like India, we can serve crores for a particular project. How much we are saving? And there is no point in investing on your foundation. Just something, it's something like money you are investing in the ground. So, the more, the more, so as, as Shethang is discussing over here, the microbial aspect, how a structure is getting degraded. Now, say for example, if you are laying some foundation beneath the earth, now in course of time, how is getting degraded? How does foundation soil is getting degraded? Now, if you are taking those things into aspect, say for example, if you feel that if your foundation in course of time, it is getting some sulfate attack, you know, probably it is bound to have some sulfate attack. Now, the source of sulfate is due to the presence of some bacteria. How can you ask it? So you are saving enough money in terms of uh, sulfate resistant concrete, I mean the cement which you are using. So similarly, you are tracking all the uncertainties so that you are bringing down the cost of the particular project and you are making ensuring the life of the project for an enhanced time period.
Very good. So basically, you are undermining the material. You are underutilizing it. This term. So the moment you put a factor of safety, two thirds, you mean like you know two two point five. You are you don't have much faith in the material. That's the reason you are not going very steep. Very useful soil. You are going very deep. Of the environment. Clear? You require more land to create environment. You are conservative. So if you really want to do justice, look into the micro structure of the system. One more thing I will get to that. Like last class, you were discussing about the genesis of the soil itself. Now, if you see a rock mass which is intact, from there you are getting a soil, and it may happen sometimes that uh, your biological microbes are the main cause for that. Now, it has that much potential to change your intact material to put it in, like a soil. Now, if you think in the opposite way, you have uh, developed a structure, foundation, whatever you say, and then there could be some microbes, or there could be some kind of uh, any like microbes or uh, bacteria which can eat up the entire uh, matrix which is prevailing there. And that way you can uh, encounter some failure of the important structure. So, like if you want to become a normal geotechnical engineer, it's just fine. But if you want to do practice, you will get some exceptional cases of accidents or let's say failure of structures. So if you want to consider all those things, then all this extra interaction will come into the picture. If you remember that sir, sir was telling some lecture back, that if there is some polluted land, then if you want to take an uh, agricultural use, or you want to use this for agricultural purpose. So you can use microbial activity to eat up the pollutant. You can use that. Also, as the example mentioned, in bioreactor landfill. So what we are doing here, we are accelerating the bacterial activity. So that's why we actually need to study their behavior, their interaction with geomaterial. What are the benefits we can take from these studies? Another interesting topic is oil sands. Type it on Google and see. Such a big, huge industry, oil sands, and try to understand why it has become such a big industry. They use the specific bacteria to extract oil, which is present in the sandy aquifers. Fine, a very interesting subject. Some of you can really master this. So this is an example where the bacterial activity is being used to detach oil, which is adhering on the particles of the soil. And production is being done, by the way. Example in the sense like we all know that bacteria was the first form of life. So it was it has been part of the nature, it was there, so it is an indispensable part. So it has up to us we master it or we learn it and then use it or play with it accordingly that that you can find some solutions for the problems we are facing. So it is mandatory I would say to know about the subject because that is there in the nature and it is part of the nature and only if you understand it and play with it in the right way, you can come up with solutions to various problems. That has no other uh, better. Normal understanding is, they say you should stop deforestation. Why? Why? What happened? What is the meaning of deforestation? What happens with that? Suppose we have all the trees. What will happen? Why? If you cut the trees, the root zone vanishes. When the root zone vanishes, this is the place where most of the bacteria gets fixed to the soil. Clear? And bacteria produces a lot of suction. And suction is binding the particles of the soil together. So, when you apply geomechanics in the real life, the answer comes. Deforestation, that's a very layman's language that, you know, soilism will take place. But the question we can do, what are the geomechanics behind the erosion of soil? Clear? We are not allowing growth of bacteria into the soil, which would have happened otherwise in the root zone. And this is the place where these particles begin bound with each other. And hence, you know, erosion of soil will not take place. So this is what people have learned now, geotechnical engineering. So slowly and slowly, geotechnical engineering, people are also now migrating into plant sciences, agricultural engineering, 
roads all modeling and so on. Some of the places you must have seen uh, slopes on the sides of over bridges and all uh, vegetated. So this is another place where people use the concepts of biosuction or uh, suction generated because of plants and uh, its root zone to prevent the erosion of the side slopes. And another example uh, would be what uh, Sir was talking about in the last lecture when I was showing the micrographs, failure of a pile foundation system because of some biologically active soil. Now imagine a nuclear reactor had, uh, had been founded on this soil and the structure fails it would be a complete disaster. So, this is where which forces some of us to think whether we have considered or have we done justice with the material and have we understood it in totality or not. Check on that bio seeding and mulching M U L C H I N G. These are becoming very big industrial practices. You know, what they do is they do bio seeding. You have come across this? They are making retaining walls, slopes, embankments, and then they, with the pressure, they, they, they use some mulch. You know what is mulch? Uh, clay minerals mixed with some seeds of uh, plants. They will make a grout and they will pressure throw it on the system. It goes, gets stuck there and because of seeds inside, what will happen? So, yes, so it will vegetate. So, these roots go and act as a reinforcement of the soil in the, re in the, in the wall. In North East particularly, I have recommended at several places, most of the river engineering projects, particularly NFR and all, uh, in biomulching. The best possible solution, very cheap solution and what you have to do is you have to just find out the best possible vegetation grows under their conditions, natural conditions. Otherwise, geodesics are very expensive. You cannot afford kilometers of the embankments, you know, uh, encased with geotextiles or geo grids. So, these type of things work very well. Are you realizing the importance? Each of the work which we are finding here requires experts. Somebody has to learn and do this. In Kashmir, most of the projects remove in Kashmir. Most of the retaining walls are being stabilized by mulching. Particularly rock slopes, wherever the rock mass is becoming uh, critical, trails, landslides. This is, that is a good solution. Grouting, drilling, reinforcement is not an easy task. How many of you have been to Badrinath or Kedarnath? So, suppose if I ask you to stabilize all the slopes, how much money would be required? Starting from Dehradun, you know, say 50 kilometers up Dehradun, the, the hill, the, the area starts. And you must have seen how difficult terrain is. Clear? So, 300 kilometers of the slopes which I have to, if I have to stabilize to make life as normal as what it is in Delhi and Bombay, how much money government of India should spend? Thousands. I am sure it will be close of those at least. In a city like Bombay, the cost of one kilometer of construction of the concrete pavement is 5 crores. So, imagine how much money you are going to spend to make life normal in this region when there are several people are dying every year just because of the natural calamity. Have you heard about cross country crudoil carrying uh, pipelines, underground pipelines? So if you search the accidents related to the structure, you will get so many accidents and so many casualties of those things. And one more issue is if, is, if these things happens under the um, uh, soil, there are two things. One is the cost related to uh, record construct the structure, and another one is the geoenvironmental issue because all those uh, body pipelines it carries either oil or uh, it carries gas, so basically hydrocarbons. Now, if you see before laying all those pipes, they have done the soil investigation in proper way, in most fashionable way. But then also there are failures in this, all those structures. Now, when people do the post mortem analysis of the failures of the structures. 
in many, many cases it was found that there could be a possibility of some activities which uh, affected the uh, structure of the uh, pipeline itself which causes the leakage of the gases or leakage of the uh, crude oil and that causes the entire explosion. So this could be one more uh, thing I think I should add here. The contamination of uh, polluted soils by using microbial activity. Yes, this is a very nice thing. I mean, you must be aware of the line of filters for swimming pools and all, where you ultimately pass floods through activated activated filters. Is it not? The activated filters are nothing but where you grow a lot of microorganisms. They help you in reducing the build purity and COD of sludge and water. So the same concept is now being utilized in decontaminating soils. Which are heavily polluted by some metals. Because these microbes will reduce them, the ionic form of the metal. We, I think about for 15 minutes back we were talking about that. Reduction of an element. Or even for that matter, extraction of radioactive metals. So now why do where do we apply all these uh, types of uh, concepts or whatever we have talked about? Suppose say for example you have some metabolic products and you have some soil mass and you have some biological activity in it. What is this biological activity going, going to really uh, do with your material? Say it creates some sort of sorptive uh, or binding property in the soil which can uh, attract the heavy metals onto it or say the, like Arif was talking about some of the heavy metals uh, getting attracted onto it or uh, some waste contaminants getting attracted onto the soil particles and you can actually isolate them from their uh, natural uh, from the natural environment and coming in contact with your groundwater say for example your groundwater is contaminated with some heavy metals so how will you uh, decontaminate your groundwater uh, without having to do a lo uh, lot of experimentation or a lot of groundwork and going uh, manipulating the system the best way would be introduce some bioactivity in it and which is capable of reducing or uh, harping onto the contaminant which is contaminating your uh, groundwater and these microbes will eat up all these contaminants and um, ensure that your water is fit for drinking. So this is one of the places where you can think of an easy application. Now coming to your uh, metal extraction, people have tried the, in the past and even now people are uh, working on uh, biological uh, ways to extract metals from ores. Normally no, all uh, your extraction procedures are all uh, energy intensive, cost intensive, you need uh, the higher temperatures in excess of 500 degrees, 600 degrees, sometimes it goes up to uh, 1500 degrees and th think about the energy that you are actually uh, consuming because of, uh, for the purpose of extraction of these metals and if you can extract these metals without uh, elevating your uh, reactor temperatures to that uh, uh, such a high level then you are actually saving on your energy costs, you are actually saving on your carbon, uh, carbon ratings and you are saving on the cost that you are incurring because of that. Not only that even the manufacturing of cement for example if you consider civil engineering how long will you keep on manufacturing cement and producing so much of uh, uh, environmental pollution because the production of cement also consumes a lot of energy. So in order to get back from this traditional practice, the, uh, somebody who is working on bioconcrete uh, may also uh, look into this aspect. Uh, why people are going to bioconcrete? Because these are mostly like self-sealing self cementing type of materials which are being developed with the help of biological activity which people can think of putting in place or think for example you create some panels with biological activity elsewhere you bring them together you assemble them and your structure is ready so this is where you can think of uh, such activities getting developed the run of such deserts suppose you want to create life there don't laugh, of, well, laugh at this idea, but I'm, I'm sure that this is required you know, in today's world. Many of you must have been to these places, Anokach and Bhavnagar and all these areas, Buj, 
you know, in the middle of the of the desert. Uh, don't you ever dream of this that these areas should also become lush green? Life should be normal there. But all Indians are living there. Are living there. How do you convert, you know, these type of desert land? Fine. So these soils, suppose if you want to give them nutrition artificially, and you are sick, you go to the hospital and the drip is given to you. You know, like where you walk out. Fine. Can I do similar things in the soils? Can I make them healthy to grow vegetation? The whole complex of you know, compression of this part of the country will change. The lands which are saline today, which have a lot of, uh, what do you call it, saline soils full of sodium chloride contamination, they can be converted into a better place to live. Everybody will be happy. So what we require is just talking, you know, on the surface, which is soil having a lot of metabolic activity. In this context, the uh, you know, we are trying to develop the bioreactor also. This is correct. And our idea is to, to create soils which are nutritionally good. So most of the part of the country you can't do vegetation, you can't do agriculture, you can't do floriculture and so on. How to change the complexion of the entire country? Become an entrepreneur. Take up these type of activities. I am telling you, this is the future. You have the knowledge of soil mechanics, you have understood shear strength and all. You know what is permeability. What you have to learn is by activity. And then the system becomes perfect. You can also think about uh, where people have tried to extract the oils, like uh, Sir was talking about oil sands. The, another synonymous term would be a microbially enhanced oil recovery. You can search it on net. Uh, you you can find uh, where they have tried to extra, uh, enhance the oil recovery from oil reservoirs because of the help of uh, biological activity. And suppose if you want to create a stable platform or if you want to create a, a place wherein your mines does not collapse your deserts can be made uh, habitable your wherein you can uh, improve your soft soils because of uh, by the help of biological activity or you can think of running your pavements in the uh, himalayas in this uh, very uh, silty uh, type of material which is available over there then you can think of the biological activity which actually binds the soil particles uh, for uh, the best example is the ant hill which uh, somebody was talking about uh, some time back, wherein the it is not only the biological activity that is mostly prevalent over there, it is the metabolic products as I have listed there, which also helps in the creation of such a material which becomes, which makes the native material a self sealing material, uh, durable material in terms of its behavior over time and also its performance with all the engineering properties. See, I wish one of you, because we are investing a lot of time in educating you guys, and I, this is my wish that one of you should take up this project and really do something to change the scenario of certain parts of the country. Life is so difficult. I, mean, I don't know how many of you are from Rajasthan, and during summers you must have observed this hell. I don't know how these people and military people are surviving there. In the military, he asked me to come and spend some time, you know, on the border. And there are very interesting project there, which is going on. The question is agglomeration. Now, by some means, if I can agglomerate all the particles of the sand, 90% problems are solved. 80%, 75% problems of Delhi will be solved. During summer, what is a dust storm? The entire Delhi city is having polluted environment. So imagine in this direction, this is what the game changer is going to be. Is your civil engineering applicate knowledge is going to be applied in this context. Environment is taken care of, population is taken care of, growth is taken care of. Don't think I am preaching you only. <laughs> I am telling you based on my uh, wish, what I would have liked to do with people like you, 